this is a pinwheel block and this is block one for Behind the Block Season 2. Now a pinwheel is constructed of a traditional block called half square triangle and you can see that here, the square that is cut in half. Half is one colour and half is another colour. That is a half square triangle unit and these are very simple and very easy to make. There are many ways to make a half square triangle but we are going to make these two at a time because we need four for this block. So for the purposes of this video this is the most efficient way to make this. However if you are making lots and lots of these there are other ways that are faster and more efficient. These blocks shouldn't give you too much trouble but there are a couple of biased edges on this that we need to watch out for and when I'm showing you how to make this I'll be pointing those out. So grab everything you need for block one from your cutting instructions. If you don't know what that is then check the link in the description below where you can sign up and download that for free and let's get started. To start we're going to need our seven inch squares in fabric B, fabric C and our background. Put those to one side for a second and then we're going to take the background squares, place the right side down so this is the back of your fabric but I'm using solid so that doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a diagonal line corner to corner. So you can do this with any pen, nobody's going to see this line so it does not matter what you use, anything is fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the 45 degree line on a square ruler or any ruler. This is my 45 degree line here. So I'm going to line up with the edge of my block and I want to make sure that the corners, and what I want to make sure is that the corners of the square are on the edge of the rulers. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start in the middle and draw out towards the corner. And then I'm going to start in the middle and draw down towards this corner and put a little bit of pressure when you get to the corner because it will stop that moving. And that's your line mark. And then repeat that for your second background square. You definitely want to pin this so it doesn't move and we want to keep our pins away from the sewing line because we're going to be sewing along this line so we want to keep our pins away from that. So get your fabric B and C squares and we're going to place these right sides together and then I'm just going to put a pin in the opposite corners from where I'm going to be sewing and that's going to help me keep this nice and stable as I sew. Okay, and that's our prep done and we are ready to sew. Now at the sewing machine we are going to be sewing a quarter inch on either side of this drawn line. So you want to get yourself your quarter inch foot as this is going to help you stay accurate. Now if you don't have a quarter inch foot that's okay. What you can do is draw a line a quarter inch on either side of this line and then sew the, those lines. So if you don't have a quarter inch foot that's your workaround. But I do have a quarter inch foot so I'm just going to line it up with this edge here. I'm also going to get a little scrap of fabric. This is a selvage end, it's folded in half. I'm going to use this as a leader. This is just going to catch any thread tails and any tension issues in the sewing machine before I get onto sewing the main block. And I'm using a stitch length of 2.1. Lining up the edge of the foot with the drawn line. When we're happy, start sewing. Notice my hand position, I'm keeping the square steady. So just apply light pressure through your fingertips and that will keep the square straight. Now, when you get to the end, if you need a little extra help to keep this stable, grab yourself a stiletto or a seam picker and just use that to hold it in place, but this wasn't too bad. Now we're going to take the next square and we're going to butt it straight up against the first one. Again, lining up the foot with the line and then just start sewing again. Now when you get to the end, get your first block and just cut the joining threads and then you're going to put it back to the sewing machine. So again, just line up the edge with a presser foot, butt it up against the previous block and then sew on through. And when you get to the end, do exactly the same thing. And then when we're finished, cut your threads. Take your pins out, cut these apart, and now we're going to go and press these. Now before we begin cutting, I highly recommend to give these blocks a quick press. As you can see, there's just a little bit of not puckering but just a little bit of bunching up there and so giving this a quick press with the iron will help to relax the fabric and will help these to get nice and flat before we cut. So just take your iron, no swirling, not pressing, we're just flattening it out, relaxing the seam nice and flat and now these are ready to cut. Now when it comes to cutting these you don't need to worry about being accurate, this is just the seam allowance. So you can cut these absolutely any way that you like. You can use scissors or you can use a ruler and a rotary cutter. And just to demonstrate to you that you can cut it any way you like, I'm actually going to use a wing clipper ruler just to cut along this line. Cutting it however you want will make no difference to the finished block. So now that we're ready to press, this is where we need to be careful. This edge here that has the stitching on it is 
a biased edge. So this will stretch very easily. This is how we can end up distorting the half square triangle. We want to press our seams to the dark fabric so that they will nest in the finished pinwheel. So you want to put the darker fabric on top. Set your seam and then open up with your fingers. And now using your fingertips, you're going to push into that seam and you're going to push it up and open and run along. So I'm not, I'm not, I should move this to show you, I'm not stretching along the fabric, I'm doing that kind of act. So just gently pressing, but making sure it's nice and open. Using quilting gloves can help with this because the tips give you a little bit more traction. Now this corner up here, it can be tempting to hold this and pull it to try and open that seam, but that will end up creating a bow in the middle of your half square triangle and distort it. You can hold this, but don't pull it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently push the iron into that seam to help open it up and then press up towards that. And when I'm pushing into the seam, I'm not miles away pushing up and pushing really hard. I'm actually almost right on the seam, like see how close the iron is and just gently pushing up. Just to prove how lovely and straight that seam is. And you can see oh, if I turn it over, the seam is going towards the darker fabric, which is what we want. So repeat that for the remaining units. So now we have four units that are ready to be trimmed to size. So we've made this a little bit bigger to give you some extra room to trim these blocks if it's your first time making these. For the purposes of the video to make it easier to show you trimming this, I have made these blocks a little bit bigger so that you can definitely see how I'm trimming these. If you wanted to do that yourself, instead of seven inch squares, use seven and a quarter inch squares and that will give you a little bit of extra fabric if you're a little nervous about making this block. So we want to square these up to six and a half inches. So if you have a six and a half inch ruler, that's brilliant, it's gonna make your life easy, but you can do this with a bigger ruler, it will not cause a problem. But square rulers are better for doing this. It's not impossible to do them with rectangular shapes, but squares will make your lives easier. So the ruler has a 45 degree line on it. So we're gonna line it up along this seam and we're gonna slide it up into this top corner. Once you're happy that everything's lined up, apply downward pressure through your fingertip and you're going to cut and cut. Now, if you have a small cutting mat like I do, and you can spin it, spin 180 degrees, or turn your block if you can't spin your mat. Make sure everything is still nicely lined up. And then because this is six and a half inch square ruler, I just need to trim along this edge. And that's our six and a half inch square HST. Now you noticed, comparing the scraps, this is what I cut off the first one. This is what I cut off the second time. So the first trim is not to get it to size, it's just to square the edge up. And then the second trim, once you flip it around, is when you cut it to the right size. Now I'm gonna show you that this is possible to do this with a bigger ruler, okay? So I have, just to go really big, I have a 16 and a half inch square ruler, which is a bit overkill, but never mind. So what you want is you want the small numbers, i.e. one in the top right corner, and you want the bigger numbers going that way. So we slide up to this corner, we're just taking a sliver off. Now, because the ruler's too big, I'm gonna lift this up, spin the block. Now, this time, we're gonna slide the 45 degree line down the seam until we get to our six and a half inch line. And so what you can see is we've got the 45 line here, six and a half inch line here, and six and a half inch line here. So this is why we wanted the small numbers in the corner because when we slide down, it makes it so easy to find the size. You can put some tape, a bit of masking tape along here. That can help you to find the size quicker. So once you're happy, you can trim. And there's your six and a half inch square. You may like because this is heavier than than the small ruler. So this will not move about as much as this will. Now we just need to lay our blocks out in the right order. And there's our pinwheel. Now we're going to place these right sides together. And because we pressed our seams to the darker fabric, you can see how nicely this nests. So just line everything up. You will want to pin this. And here's a bonus tip for you. We're going to be sewing down here so you can see the little balls of the needle are here so that I can quickly pull them out as we sew to save time. So now I'm going to join these with a quarter inch seam and then I'll be back. We want to press the top row to the right and the bottom row to the left. So to do that, have fabric C showing up both times. Set your seam, roll it back, finger press. Same idea as we did along the previous seam. And then just hold the top of the block for a bit of tension and then press. But you can see how this is a beautiful intersection. So this is the top and it's going to the right. Now the bottom, set the seam, roll back, finger press it open. 
Again, quilting gloves are really helpful for doing this to get a bit of traction if your fingers are slipping. Take that seam. Beautiful. And then we have this one going to the left. So we place these together and you can see we have nice points here. Now we're going to place these right sides together. We're just going to double check that we've got them the right way. Now, because we press these rows in the opposite directions, this will nest together. So you're going to get a pin, put a pin in that center seam to hold it in place. Now, when you sew this seam, this seam here is bulky and it's really thick and your sewing machine perhaps will distort your quarter inch seam. It'll either push it away or it'll pull it towards and the seam might do a little bit of a bow there. So you want to take your time and slow down and stop and adjust. So let's do that just now. So your careful quarter inch. Now we've reached the middle and you can see that this is distorted because of the pin. So we're going to take the pin out so that this will lay flat. And we're just going to make sure that it's not shifted underneath. I'm going to get a little seam ripper and we're going to use this just to stabilize. And I'm going to take this nice and slow. Now finally, we are going to swirl the seams to produce the center bulk, because otherwise this will be a really bulky seam and it will not lay flat. So what you want to do, we want to unpick these stitches here. So there's a couple of stitches. Just unpick them down to the quarter inch seam. Okay, so I've unpicked this line here, just down to the quarter inch seam that runs across the block. Open up, and in the middle here, you're going to just manipulate this until the seam swirls. Okay, and you'll know you've done it right because you'll see almost like a mini pinwheel. So see the blue, green, blue, green. So it just takes a little bit of manipulating it to get it right and then give it a good old smoosh. Don't twirly smoosh, just press straight down with your finger. Then with your iron, hit it with that iron. And again, I'm not swirling, not whisking an egg, pressing down from above. See that little pinwheel there? And ta-da, look at that. So look how lovely and flat that is. There's no bulk, it's nice and flat, and look how beautiful the points are. So we're just gonna press from this side, just to make sure the seam is fully open. Give it a nice little press, being just careful not to stretch. And that is the pinwheel box. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so that was how to make the pinwheel block. And as I promised, it's dead easy. Once you know those couple of things that you have to watch out for, it is a doddle to make this one. And it's a fun one to get started with for this series because it gives you a nice gentle introduction to working to half square triangles. And this really is a foundational block. It can be used in lots and lots of quilts and lots of patterns. So I want to show you now a couple of quilts that you can make using just this pinwheel block. So this first design that you can see here, I have made this and instead of doing two blue and two green, I have done three green half square triangles and one blue. And then I have just set them all in the same direction. This is very nice, very simple, very easy to make. You just need lots of pinwheel blocks. So you can see this is still the same idea. It's a pinwheel block made with three green half square triangles and one blue half square triangle. But the software that I use, Prequilt, has just randomly rotated and arranged these into making this pattern. At first glance, you might think, oh, that looks like a really complicated pattern. Like there's lots of interesting weird blocks in there, but it's not, it's just pinwheels. And it's kind of funny with this one because when you look at it, it becomes hard to pick out where the pinwheels are and where they end. And so I love the kind of optical illusion of this quilt. And so, I mean, look how easy that would be to make just using pinwheels. And then finally, example number three is still using pinwheels, but this time we've gone back to the two colors, two blue, two green half square triangles but this time we've introduced some background squares so this is almost like a single iris chain but made using pinwheel there is a lovely fluttery feeling down this quilt if you follow the lines across it diagonally it creates beautiful space very nice indeed you can play with the positioning but you can see how i have all the blue going in one direction and all the green going in another direction and it creates that nice kind of diamond or square on point effect. So again, this looks like a really complicated, difficult quilt that you spend a lot of time on, but actually it's just a pinwheel. So that's the example quilts. And I like doing these example quilts because I love to show you the possibilities that you can make with just a single block. Sometimes one block on its own can be so powerful and can give you so many choices. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you found it helpful. If you liked 
what you saw and you want more of this, then please do give this video a thumbs up and why not subscribe and click the bell so you'll get notified when more videos in this series come out. So that's everything I have for you on block number one of Behind the Blocks, the pinwheel. It was so simple and so easy to make. I hope you are going to enjoy making this one. Little bonus tip for you when you're laying these out, make sure you have them in the right place because as you can see, I had a whoopsie daisy moment and sewed it upside down. So make sure you get them in the right place and you don't do what Tom did. So that's it for video one of the Behind the Blocks series. In video number two, we will be covering the Jacob's Ladder. And again, this is another lovely versatile block. Very traditional, but can be turned into very modern with lots of opportunities to play with it. So I hope you'll join me for that one. So have fun sewing your pinwheel. Hope you have a great day. Take care and I will see you soon.